Do you want to do it yourself? That's hot. With the return of the stash, it was insinuated that it looked like I could be a brazer. So felt like that's a great idea. And today we're going to do a brazing video. Let's do a cheap how to on doing your own metal work. I do a ton of custom metal fabrication and I use some really expensive tools, tools that are just I've collected over time because I've wanted to have better and better tools, but that can then seem a little out of touch and we're gonna just bring it all the way back. And I went out and bought just the cheapest versions of the tools that I would suggest to you if you wanna build your own bumper or full chassis, anywhere in between. So today you won't see any of my overly expensive fabrication tools, just down to basics amateur style. Today I'm going to run you through the tools and materials needed to build just about anything for one tenth scale, whether that is a scale off-road truck or even if you wanted to do something for like a drift car. These tools would be a great start to get you going without spending much money. After I show you the tools and materials, we're also going to build a couple of things. Just to try and give you an idea of how easy this can really be. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. Let's jump right into the tools and try and get you over the hurdle of what I mean by cheap. So heat, your heat source is the first hurdle. And I went out and I bought a map gas cylinder. This is about 11 or 12 bucks currently here in California, probably depends on where you live. And I bought one of the cheap torch heads for it. This was also $13. So this is all you need for your heat source. You're under 30 bucks easily. And I have to imagine most places. So that is all you need for that. Now this doesn't have an auto igniter or anything like that. Just like anything I'm going to show you today, there is a more expensive and better version and it, it doesn't stop. Next, I wanna quickly jump to the materials before we get to the uh, filler rod and things like that we're going to use. We're going to be talking about steel mainly today because steel is the easiest to work with. You can, you know, stainless steels are not impossible, but steel is easiest and it's kind of the easiest thing to find as well. You can find it in most places. This is 3 16 inch diameter steel brake line. It is coated, which isn't ideal because we do have to remove that completely and get it cleaned off before we're going to be able to weld up some nice joints. But it's easy to find. It's magnetic, which helps in fabrication. And just overall, it's a good base. It is an actual tube, which is nice to keep weight down. And it makes it easier to get the joints heated up as there's not as much material there. Now, brake line isn't as strong as some of the other 3 16 inch diameter tubing that we can buy, but that's more expensive. It's a little bit harder to find. This is widely accessible. You're gonna be able to find it at any auto parts store. You want the rigid stick though, not the coil. So you want it to look like this. I think you can get these in longer lengths, but 3 16 inch diameter, rigid brake line. That's what you're after. You of course have to cut the flared ends off. You throw away these fittings. And that's really going to be the, the biggest things you're going to, you're going to look for there. Also, oftentimes we use tabs and plate, things like that. The thickness of sheet metal that you can use widely varies. You can use some really thin 22, 24 gauge steel and what the materials we're going to show today will work well with that. You can go all the way up to, you know, 11 gauge or eighth inch range. And that's going to still work with a lot of the materials that we're going to show today. Also, the plate is much more difficult. Now it's, you're going to have to manipulate that into the sizes and shapes that you want. You're going to have to cut it. You're going to have to drill it, all of that. The tubing, a little bit more straightforward to work with. For almost all of the plate type stuff we're going to work with today, I'm going to cheat a little bit for the purpose of making this video more simple for myself. Uh, I've got some stuff here from Scale Metal Supplies, not a sponsor of this video, but uh, I do like the product and it's going to work pretty well. He sells these things called bend and braze bumpers. So they come in a flat sheet like this. You just kind of fold them into shape and then you just weld up the joints. And that's going to be great for our demonstration today. You could cut this all stuff all yourself and get it all fit. And it's going to take you a lot more time, 
but it's the same process. This is just going to make it a lot more easy on myself for showing you welding up a bumper. But also he has these very simple bumper tabs, which just bolt to the side of your chassis. And then it's got a place to put tubing through to start welding up a more tubular style bumper. And we'll probably work with that as well to build a more, you know, narrow comp style or esque bumper. It's just going to give you a good idea of what it takes. You can make this stuff yourself uh, or a version of it, something similar. It's not really a huge difference. Uh, I know that that's a little bit outside of the widely available, easily accessible, but you get the point. Now we talked about the heat and we talked about the material, but we need something that makes those two things play well together. And that's where we're going to get into the silver solder. Now it is called silver solder, but we are actually going to be brazing. The difference between soldering and brazing is just the heat range where you're working. Soldering is anything under 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Brazing is over 800 degrees, but under the molten point of metal. But I went out and I bought three examples of materials that you can buy. These three products are all made by the same company. This is all made by Harris. And we have Safety Silve 45 in a wire form here with a little bottle of Flux. That's a common one. And then we have two more here. This is also Harris Safety Silve 45. This is basically the same product as this. However, the flux is pre-installed. <laughs> it is on the actual rod itself already. So you don't have to separately apply the flux. It's just on it already. And this one here is also safety seal, but this is 56. Now, 45 and 56, what those numbers are referring to is the amount of silver inside of these. Now, as you can imagine, silver is not cheap. Now, as you can imagine, anything with silver in it is not cheap. This stuff is kind of expensive, but it goes a lot further than you would think. You definitely don't need to buy as much as I did. I only bought this for demonstration and uh, just to kind of show you guys what possible options there are. Now, starting off with the Safety Seal 45 in the rod format, this was $29.21 and there are three rods of it in there. That's gonna go a decently long way. It flows into a joint pretty well. And also as you improve, your solder is going to go further and further. You're going to use less and less of it every time you do a joint. So first time may go a little bit faster, but following times it's gonna go, you know, it's gonna last you longer and longer. Now this was also Safety Silve 45. This one was however, $45. These are both 1 16th inch diameter solder. So what's in the raw coil there and what's inside of the flux covered stick. These are 18 inches long and there's three of them. This one doesn't actually tell me how long the coil is. So <laughs> I have to imagine that the pricing is similar to each other, uh, but I can't tell you exactly if it is. I don't know if there's 50% more in here or not. It just doesn't say. The Safety Silve 56 was a little bit more. Rather than the $29 I paid for the 45, it was $35. But why do you choose one versus the other? 45 is what's considered more of a general purpose. It is a little bit more forgiving on the gap that you have. It still needs to be pretty tight. You need to have your metal fairly well fit together. But it does, it's a little bit more forgiving in that way. It's also a fillet forming. So when you have a joint there, it's gonna make a little bit of a, a fillet into it, kind of smooth things out in that manner. But if that's not what you're after, if you want that joint to be almost exactly like it shows without anything there, then the 56 is a little bit better choice. It'll keep things a little bit cleaner in that way. You do have to have your joints even tighter with the 56 than you do with the 45 though. It does have a good wicking characteristic, so it wants to flow in and get you know a good penetration to it. A little bit better than the 45. But for most uses in RC, even if you're new, or especially if you're new, then the 45 probably be what I would recommend. But now if you're keeping track, that means if you buy yourself a $26 torch setup and you get $29 worth of silver solder, you're pretty close to being ready to start making some metal work. 
Once you get past those steps, then you're into the fabrication tools. You need to be able to cut and bend, grind, hold together what you're building. And that's where your imagination or your budget is going to just kind of dictate what you want to do. Now for tube work, a tube bender is kind of critical. You can get away with a very inexpensive brake line bender. I have one or two or more of them and I don't know where they're at. I'll show you a photo of one you can get online and I'll link to everything that I'm using to try and find you just an accessible place to buy these things. To bend this tubing, I'll probably be using a bender that I already have, breaking my own rules a little bit, but it's the least egregious part of it, I think. To cut this stuff, you use a Dremel, use a hacksaw, you can use anything. This stuff is super easy to cut as well. Use a rotary tool would be my, my best suggestion. After you cut it, you are going to need to get it good and cleaned up. Clean joints. Everything should be clean before you start adding heat. Don't get no fingerprints, no tape marks or pencil or pen marks, Sharpies. Get everything off it, get it good and clean. You'll, your results will be so much better if you just focus on being clean. As far as fitting the tubes together, uh, simple round files or chainsaw files, pretty cheap, inexpensive. You may already have them. You can also just use your rotary tool. I've done that a lot in the past as well. It, it's not that difficult. Spend a little bit of time and you'll get there. Throw some tubes away. Just get used to it. Just dive in, make mistakes. You'll learn from them and get better. But with that being said, let's go make some mistakes. Let's go out into the shop and start brazing some of this stuff together. So I have a safe workspace set up. Not gonna catch anything on fire in or around the area that I'm working on, super important. Wear some PPE, gloves, proper eyewear. Again, just be responsible with where you're working. Now, we've got our torch set up. I've screwed the head onto it, and this does not have an auto igniter, so we are going to use a uh, striker here. Now you can use a lighter, whatever you have, be safe again. So we're gonna crack the bottle. Now I already have my bumper bent into shape. This bumper is big. There's a lot of a lot of length on this. Now it's good to get a, an area that you want to accept the heat warmed up. And if we're gonna do any length, we're gonna have to work this along. You need to keep heating, flow the material down into it. You can work the flux with, or the uh, solder with the heat. It'll follow. After everything cools down, you can give it a good sanding. Uh, this is an emery board. You can use a flap disc, a sand, you know, whatever you prefer to use for sanding. You are gonna have some of this, which I believe is just like burnt on flux. But uh, we got through and we've got, I did half of the bumper. There's some, there's some uh, cut lines that stop and that's where I stopped with my brazing. But these are filled in. Now you can tell, you can, you can still see where the, the bends and everything were, but it, uh, it's fused together. So you're not, you're not unbending this. Now these cut lines here where these bends were, I'm not able to fill all of those. Some of them I, are, I am, I can actually see on the back side of the bumper that they are sealed off, but others I'm not. And that's just because, like I was saying, you need a good fit. And these, since they're being bent, they open up a gap and it really just doesn't allow me to fill those in the same way. If you were welding, that wouldn't be a problem at all. This joint here looks unfilled, but on the back side, I can tell that it's got a nice solid bead all the way across. And that's where the metal is actually touching the fold. So I have no concerns on the strength of my joints there. I can see that I, it flowed all the way through on the back side throughout, which is a great sign and, and something that you can tell as far as uh, how your joints are working. This actually flowed in there perfectly throughout. So pretty happy with that. Now, I do have more cleanup to do, you know, I'll get the rest of that flux off, but I need to finish up the other side of this bumper. I'm gonna finish getting this braze together with that Safety Seal 45, and then we're gonna go on to the next project where we'll switch up which of the brazing products we're using. 
you can wick the solder down with heat. So once you've got it in that joint, you can just heat past it and it'll want to flow that way. You can see here, I actually applied some of that paste flux as well. With this plate style work, it is a little bit more difficult to uh, not over burn the flux, the flux uh, wrapping on this stick solder. All right, so our bumper is totally brazed up as far as the main structure goes. Now we still have to add mounting tabs to this one, but just looking again at the back side, I can see my silver solder has penetrated all the way through there. This bumper is super solid. We just have to uh, finish getting it cleaned up and put the mounting tabs in place. Also, this is some pretty thick plate, which makes it much more difficult to braise. So doing a bumper with this heavy plate steel is uh, one of the more difficult ones. Moving on to the uh, tubing, this is going to be so much easier. So next we're gonna build a quick tube bumper. These are those bumper mounts from Scale Metal Supplies. These are the steel versions. Make sure that you're looking at those and not stainless steel. Just make things simpler for you. This is our brake line here. I've already cut one of the uh, flanges off. You can actually now just take and slide those fittings off as well. I have these set up at 74 millimeters from inside to inside. That's pretty standard for uh, VS410, SCX101, SCX102. Honestly, most cars are set up close to that. So you can measure and go from there. But I'm going to take and hold my tube up. I'm going to extend it a little bit past on each side. We're just going to kind of take a wild stab at it, mark the length that we're gonna go for. Now we need to just cut this. Again, you can use a hacksaw, Dremel tool, rotary tool of any sort. I've got just a three inch cutoff wheel on a tool here. Now, once you have it cut, you're only part of the way there. You do wanna clean up the ends so that there is, you know, how you want them to be finished. It's a little bevel on the end. You can do that with a hand file, uh, sandpaper. It doesn't take a ton to get it cleaned up. But after that, then you need to hold it up to where you're going to actually mount it. And you need to mark what needs to be cleaned. So you need a little bit of distance on each side. You're best off just cleaning from one end all the way past, maybe at least a, at least a quarter inch. The further you go, the better. If you want to do it with elbow grease, you can get an aggressive sanding block and just go from there. I've got everything set in there. I'm going to use a one, two, three block to make sure that my tube is square to my mounts on both sides. It is. I'm going to recheck my measurement. Pretty close to spot on. Maybe about a millimeter over width, but that's okay for fitment. Give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room. But we also need to center this tube. This time we're going to switch and we're going to go to the coiled silver solder and the flux in a bottle here. So everything should be good and clean. Now we're going to apply some flux to the outside. We're gonna put it on both sides and try and get it totally around the joint. I'm a little heavy at first and we're just gonna work that around. Where there is flux, solder will flow. So if it's everywhere, you're gonna have extra cleanup, but should have a good joint. So we've got one side prepped. Once it goes completely clear, start watching that your base metal is getting hot enough and you can start applying the solder and then you'll see it flow. So you don't need to keep it there, just dab it in, it'll hold it for a second and if it's hot enough, it should flow in. Obviously my magnet is too close, but sacrifices can be made. We're almost to that point where my solder is, or my flux is clear. We're looking good now.
There we go. It flowed in. Flowed all around that joint. And I can see it already is wicked all the way to the other side. So we don't need to apply it to both sides. And we are going to sacrifice that magnet. We're almost, now it's clear. Came off and now, now it's flowing. And it's flowed to both sides, so it's wicked through. It's good and cooled off now, and we'll try and get a close up here. Uh, I haven't cleaned this at all yet, but you can see how the solder has come all the way through. On this side, we only applied it from the inside of the bumper. On this side, the opposite, we applied it from the outside, and it wicked through to the inside. Now from here, we could grab some eighth inch solid rod and, you know, put a little bit of like a, a grill guard or a bull bar, whatever you want to call it on there, just for some added detail. It's not too difficult. So let's try that next. To do that, we need to again, get this good and clean to be able to do this whole process again. We just took all of the coating off there, so it gives us a good area. But I'm also gonna get these tabs cleaned up slightly too, because well, I haven't bent the rod yet, so we need to figure out where we're gonna do it and might as well have everything clean and ready to go. So I know I was saying eighth inch, but I figured since we're doing tubing, I should just stay with this tubing. Uh, so I took and put two bends in a piece of brake line here, and it's longer than it should be, so I mean, I have to decide what length I'm going to cut it to. Now, if you're doing two bends and you're trying to match them up and you, you know, don't want to buy like an angle finder, the cheapest way to do it is just to put it on a piece of metal or paper and mark it with a Sharpie and then check the other side. So you can keep kind of working your way up to it, but just trace it onto something. That's the easiest way to check your bends are the same. But. I've made a couple of marks on my tube here. I'm going to cut these, trying to stay as parallel with this top surface as possible, and then we'll use a round file to cope them. You can use a nice big round file to get you the general shape and just clean it up with your smaller files as needed. Just cleaning out the inside of the tubes as well. And then I'll clean up the outside edge with a larger flat file just to get any of the little burrs off of it. But now we should have a, a coped end on each side. It should fit pretty tight onto our bumper, which it does. So now we just have to get it held into place, decide our angle, and attach it. And with a healthy amount underneath of there, just a little dab on the base bumper, we should be good to go. These tubes should heat up much faster than when you're trying to heat up that much larger plate steel. Missed the recording on that second side, but basically the same process, heat and flow. But we'll get this thing cooled off now and give it a look. 
a little bit of sanding to clean off some of the flux and whatnot. And you can have this bumper knocked out in less than 15 minutes, especially if you bought the tabs like I've got here. Those make things super easy. But, you know, for the cost of an aftermarket bumper, you can almost buy the tools and the material to have custom bumpers. And then you can make all the rest of them for next to nothing forever. Also, the end result of making things yourself is more satisfying. I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this completely cleaned up and we'll just shoot a quick coat of paint on it and then mount it on a truck, wrap this video up. I think the biggest thing to take away from this whole episode is that metal work doesn't have to be intimidating. It's not that difficult. And once you jump in, I think you'll understand that. It doesn't have to be expensive either. You'll pay more for many aftermarket parts that you could make yourself pretty easily without much investment. And it also doesn't take a whole shop. If you have a relatively safe place where you can have a reasonably small open flame and some decent ventilation, you can do this. Any back patio or open area will do without a problem. But one quick tip, make sure you're not applying that flame to concrete. Concrete will actually like explode. So don't do that. After brazing this up quickly, and it's been a little while since I've brazed with these methods in a, a regular map gas torch. I will suggest pick up the Harris with the separate bottle of flux and the coil. If you're out of practice a little bit, or I think even with just that size of map gas, it's a little bit easier just because it heats such a large area. But with the simple map gas torch, I think that you'll like being able to reapply the flux whenever you want and as much as you want. Or you can buy a little thing of that flux separately if you like the idea of using the stick better, which is also a pretty decent idea. And I'll link to a separate bottle of flux. The flux is very inexpensive. I highly recommend give this a shot, make some parts, sell them to your local friends or local crawlers, and then make more for yourself. You'll pay for your materials and your all of your tools quickly. And I love buying custom trucks and all that. So I hope you build a whole chassis and I hope that I buy it. If as you progress, you want to do a full chassis of some sort, don't forget that if you go to my website, harleydesigns.com, I have free chassis templates where you can go print them out in full scale and it'll give you individual templates for every single tube on a chassis. A number of different styles, some different options. You can scale them to fit if you wanna change the size a little bit. They're free to download. Go download them, take a look at them, throw them away if you don't wanna use them. It just will give you some ideas and a place to start if you're interested in it. And if this video made you wanna dive in and do some metal work, send me some photos. Love to see what you did after watching the video. I appreciate all of you guys for watching. As always, hit the like button if you enjoy these videos. Subscribe if you're not already. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one. As you can tell, this is Japanese.